Cool. Yeah. All right. Looks like we have started recording. So welcome to week two, everyone. Um, hope your week's been going well. And hope you guys have watched uh, week one and did the assignments. If not, again, don't worry. I'm setting a hard deadline on like the week of July 20th. So if you guys haven't done it yet, it's completely fine. Um, though, if you guys haven't watched the week one lectures yet, uh, lecture yet, you might be a bit lost this week. But um, yeah, without further, further ado, let's get into it. Oh, I also have another announcement. I'm just going to put this up there so you guys can scan it while I um, talk about a couple announcements and tips I have. Some of you guys have been texting me about um, the FEA Brightspace course. For the meantime, uh, please just disregard that. So um, my supervisor, who basically is the head of the FEA course, he just created the course for me. Um, but the thing is, our modules are going to be a bit different this summer. So uh, we're not going to really correspond with the FEA course. We're probably about week, week three on the Brightspace course. But I mean, as you guys can see, we're, we're just into week two right now. So just disregard that for now. Uh, if we're going to use the Brightspace, Brightspace course, I'm going to update you guys on that. But for the meantime, please submit everything through Google Forms and um, just know that our primary source of um, contact will be through Slack. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. So today we're going to be talking about mesh. So let's go back here. Yeah, we're going to be talking about mesh improvement and shape optimization. I'm going to split it into two parts. The first one, mesh, mesh improvement, basically going to talk about the different mesh settings available on Fusion. I know we, we touched on that last week, but we really kept it at the default setting. This week, we're really going to dive deep, get into it. Um, and hopefully by the end of this session, you guys will better understand what the different mesh settings uh, available are, and you guys will be able to pick the right mesh settings for your needs. And the second part of this lecture uh, will be shape optimization. And uh, how you guys can think of this, I know we went over it last week, but if you guys, if you guys did your assignments, you guys will see that the safety factors of all your assignments are going to be 15, except for that last one. Um, and if you guys saw the warning page um, or the results page that pops up after your simulation is done, Fusion will give you a couple um, suggestions on how you can drop that safety factor. Because ideally, we'd like our safety factor to be about 1.5. Um, and getting a safety factor of 15 means basically we're our, our model is not efficient, whether uh, it be because our model itself, the geometries, like um, very safe, or we're using a material that's way too strong for our needs, right? So we're going to take a look at how we can use shape optimization, basically, to drop down our safety factor as close as possible uh, to our goal and make our model more efficient. So let's get into it. And if you guys um, get a chance to scan the attendance QR code that will be there in the recording, and I will also post it in Slack. So first, let me answer the question of what is a mesh, right? So if you guys have CAD it before, which I'm assuming all of you have, uh, you guys will know when you guys have your 3D model there, like it's just like plain, like it's just like a, a uniform color, right? So what softwares do, like Fusion and FEA, is they separate, they split your 3D mod model into different, the, the smaller bodies, uh, which are called elements. So throughout this lecture and maybe um, next week and the week after, uh, whenever I refer to an element, that means an individual body uh, after meshing our 3D model, basically. And basically when we have a mesh, the smaller or the finer the mesh is, the, the the greater the number of elements there will be intuitively, of course. And as you guys can see in a bit, uh, I'll show you guys what it means if you guys can't really um, visualize it at the moment. But of course, um, if you guys have more elements, smaller elements, last week I said how Fusion sort of solves your study, your simulations is by um, applying partial differential equation on each individual element. So if you have more elements, Fusion will take a longer time because it'll have to apply the same partial diff EQ on 
greater numbers of elements, right? So, I mean, that intuitively makes sense. So, yeah, as I said, it'll take a longer to finish, uh, but you'll get a more accurate result, right? Uh, so here, I think, okay, yeah, let me visualize this for you. So here we have um, a 10 millimeter element and it looks like it's just a cube here because it's just a square, right? So there's six sides in a cube and it's 10 millimeters. So what that means is basically you see each line over here is gonna be 10 millimeters long. So if you go and count, we have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So we can approximate this um, 2D model of, I mean, yeah, the 2D version of our cube here to be a 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter cube, right? So um, I just wanna help you guys visualize what uh, an element is and how it takes up our 3D model. So we have 10 millimeter element here. So this is 10 millimeters, this is 10 millimeters. And it's saying that we have 159 elements. So if we do um, some simple math, we'll actually see that it makes sense because here we have again, five and five. So multiply that so we can approximate each side to have 25. And again, a cube has six sides. So 25 times six comes out to be 150. Now it says about 159. And why is that? Uh, if you guys see here, it's a bit, um, it's not really uniform. like. Like this one might have like, this is one, two, three, four, five, but somewhere in the middle here, it could be like six or seven. And that's why it's not really exactly 150, but that's basically uh, how fusion creates, sort of splits your model up into individual elements. And it takes fusion about 0.25 seconds to solve an element here. So 159 um, elements, you can just multiply that and do the math. But then again, we can make our mesh finer. So this mesh is five millimeters. You guys can do the math here. It should come out to be about 10. And again, doing some math, multiplying whatever you get from multiplying this times this, multiply that by six, you should get approximately this number. And this will take about 165.5 seconds per fusion to sort of solve, right? And we get a lot finer here at 2.5. Again, number of elements goes up. And because of that, the time to calculate goes up as well. Keep going. We see the same pattern here. If it's 1.25, then it'll take about 10,000 seconds to solve because we have a load more elements to deal with now, right? Uh, up to this point, um, can you guys give me a thumbs up if that makes sense? Cool, cool, cool. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right, let's keep going. Um, yes, so how can mesh be modified in Fusion? There are a couple settings that you can play around with in Fusion to change your mesh, mesh sorry. Uh, one of them is the model base size. Now, it's basically, uh, if you pick this to sort of create your mesh, you're basically asking Fusion to create the mesh based on your geometry with 10% being the, the more the more rough coarse mesh and 1% being uh, the smaller, finer uh, mesh, right? And then another way is by absolute size. So what you saw earlier in here, this is absolute size. Um, so you basically tell Fusion like how many, how far apart you want each element to be and how how big you want each element to be, right? So uh, I think in Fusion, it's a scale from like one millimeter to 10 millimeters. Um, so if you have 10, of course, it's gonna be like really coarse, really rough. Your, your mesh is gonna be like really big. But then if you have it as one millimeter, then you're gonna have a lot more elements because now your elements are gonna be way smaller. And then we also have advanced settings. So we can play around with the mesh a bit more. Um, and I'm not gonna go through the, these just yet because we're gonna go through them one by one later. Um, but right now we're going to deal with the one on top, the average element size and sorry, yeah, there's a bunch of them and I'm just going to run through these hints. I know this first one up over here, I told you guys already, but it's going to come in really handy today because, um, you will need to submit about 51 screenshots. I think in total, you'll have to do about 17, 18 studies in total. So 
I really don't expect you guys to finish everything by today, which is why, again, the hard deadline is July 20th. So you guys have a lot of time to, to do this. It's not going to be hard. It's just going to be really time consuming. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to run through these. So we could also compare studies if you'd like to. I'll show you guys how to do that later. Uh, but besides that, another hint that I would like you guys to know is to really name your studies. Because again, like I said earlier, we're going to be running a lot of studies today. So if you guys don't name your studies, you guys might really get lost. Like if you're trying to uh, refer back to a previous study, you might not know which one's which. So it'll be very helpful, helpful for you guys to name your studies today. Um, let me just go over that real quick. Yeah, so when you're comparing to uh, results, you can uh, compare like a lot of things. Of course, like uh, last week in our assignments, I asked you guys to screenshot the displacement safety factor and stress. So that's actually one thing we can compare. Here down here, we have result type. So we can um, pick say safety factor and Fusion's automatically going to synchronize both models to show their safety factors. Same with minimum and maximum. It's gonna show the minimum and maximum points of each study, but I'll show you guys that later. Um, right now, uh, I'd like you guys to actually jump into an assignment and I'm gonna show you guys how to go through this. Uh, so what we wanna do is first change our mesh. So again, we'll be using using um, analysis, the same file that we used last week. Um, and it should be attached in the email I sent out earlier today. If you guys don't have that, please do text, send a DM, uh, send a message in the chat or DM George's iPad, because that's where I'll be seeing all your messages. Um, but yeah, let me get into it. So it's asking us to have a 10,000 Newton load, 180 degrees. Uh, X axis is basically just this, right? If you guys don't remember. So again, we'd like to constrain, fully constrain. Make sure it's a disguise and make sure all the axes are selected. Fully constrain the bigger hole. Make sure it's a lock here. Then once you guys are done with that, add a load. Now you, you wanna use force here, right? Just the force. Um, you want the force to be pointing outwards here. It doesn't have to be 180 degrees as long as it's pointing outwards, right? And for the magnitude, you'd like it to be 10,000 Newtons, right? And that's the basic stuff. So that's what we learned in week one. And now we're gonna take a look at the mesh, right? There's two ways you can go to the mesh, the mesh settings. Yes, for sure. Sim simplify the model. So you would go here. Up here, there's the simplify. I'm gonna go here, click there real quick. Now, if you guys just downloaded the model, down here you guys should see a couple things. Please do delete those. And how you delete those is you just right click on one of them and you should be able to delete some um delete them. Uh, I'm using the analysis file I used last week, so I have deleted them. But if you have not, again, you should be able to find it right here, close to the top left, simplify, and right click on the bottom. There's nothing here, but if you have not simplified the model yet, there should be something here. Okay, cool. Yeah, no problem. So how do we access the mesh? One way is by going here, right clicking on the mesh here. So again, right click mesh settings, or we can go up here to settings and just go directly to mesh. Doesn't matter um, how you get here. Both ways will take you here. I'm gonna show you guys. So that was the settings. If I right click on setting on mesh, sorry, and go to mesh settings, I'm gonna go to exactly where I was earlier, right? And this is what I was telling, uh, talking to you guys about. If we do model base size, right? This slider here, this is more, more so for um, Fusion to create the mesh for you. So if we create a 10% model base size mesh here, it's gonna be, again, right click and generate mesh. Or you can click this I button here if you'd like to. Um, but yeah, so if we, if we use, the, um, use the model base size, it's gonna be really rough here. But if we decide to use absolute size here. We can specify 10 millimeters here. Let's press okay. 
and right click here and generate mesh. So I'm going to show you guys what I mean earlier, just in case it's not clear enough yet. All right. So we specified earlier that each element should be 10 millimeters, right? Each line you see here is 10 millimeters long, right? So intuitively, the thickness of our model here should be 10, 20 millimeters long, right? I mean, 20 milli millimeters, um, what do you say, thick. Uh, just to check that, I'm going to go back to our design workspace and verify that. If we inspect this with this, we see that it is indeed 20 millimeters thick. So that's what our mesh means here, our absolute size mesh. So same thing, if we make this one millimeter, then logically there should be lines going down here, right? Let's just see that. And the finer you make your mesh, <laughs> the longer it'll take Fusion to actually mesh your, your model. So this shouldn't be a shock. Um, and I know, I'm just gonna swipe back here. I know these here, this 1% and this one millimeter is gonna take really long for you guys to mesh and to solve, um, which is why I believe uh, you guys won't be able to finish this on time. Like, I mean, not on time, like by the end of the course, this week's course, this week's lecture, which is fine because it's not due like next week. Like the hard due date would be um, July 20th, but please do like occasionally work on it and solve some more. Um, yeah, it's taking too long. So, okay, okay, here we go. Maybe. Okay, I mean, I feel like you guys get the point uh, and you guys will be able to see it for yourself. Uh, but right now I just wanna run through how exactly to set up the study real quick. Sorry, my fusion's um, frozen. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to do this study real quick and then you guys can, I'll give you guys about five minutes to clone your studies, maybe rename them and do, do like some of them yourself and maybe solve them while you're here. Um, sorry about this guys, my fusion's frozen. Okay, I'm just gonna go back here now. Um, Hopefully when I come back, okay, okay, sorry, uh, good to know it's not just me, um, sorry guys, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I, like quick raise of hands before I even like show how to do this, do you guys know like what to do or would you guys like me to show how to do um, the simulation itself? Like uh, do you guys know how to do the simulation without my help? Can you guys please raise your hand? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Nice. Yeah, all right. So while while I'm just gonna take a sneak peek back at Fusion. Okay, it's still frozen. Cool. I'm going to um just reload my fusion here. Um all right, come back. All right, we should be good now. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, you guys will have to do a one millimeter absolute size um, mesh. Hopefully it doesn't um, make your fusion crash, uh, freeze, and hopefully it's not as bad so that it doesn't crash. But, but yeah, uh, I'm gonna open up my file again. Cool. So I'm going to delete these because these aren't ours. Um, but yeah, let me constrain this and create a load over here that goes out and it's 10,000 newtons. Once I've done that, oh, I want that. Cool. Okay. Once I've done that, again, go to mesh here. And let's keep it as, so 
just to be sure, I want you guys to change this first one to five. And how you guys know um, if you're at the right value is actually just by hovering over the slider. If you hover over it long enough, it'll show you what, so if I move it here, it'll show you what value you guys are at. Um, I want you guys to change it to five and then change it to 1%, right? So that's gonna be two. So right now it's gonna be five. Let me generate the mesh over here. Cool. Okay. You guys do see Fusion's giving me a problem here. Oh, sorry. Looks like I fixed it twice. I do not need that. So ideally what I want you guys to do is to um, We'll click here and rename this to, um, I mean, you could just change it to 10%, right? Because you guys are going to do a lot of studies today, just to be sure. But that, like, change uh, the names. It's a bit more intuitive. And then instead of hitting solve, what you guys can do now, just clone this study, go back to the mesh settings, and I'll drag your mesh down to 1%. Click OK. Um, make that one, sorry, double click and make it 1%. And just keep doing that for the rest. So the next ones, you want to change your absolute size instead of the model base size to 5 millimeters, 2.5, and 1. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to clone study here and then go back to our mesh setting. And Instead of going average element size, I'm going to hit here, absolute size. And then again, 5, 2.5, and 1. So I'm going to change it to 5, 2.5, and 1. Just keep doing that. And once you have all of them, that's when you hit solve. Because when you hit solve, you can click on all of them and just solve them all together. It takes a lot uh, faster. Because once Fusion is done with a study, it'll immediately go to the next one and then immediately go to the next one. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give you guys about Two and a half minutes, maybe two minutes to, to set those up. It shouldn't be too bad. Um, it's pretty straightforward. But if you guys do have any questions, please uh, leave them in the chat because now I'll be able to see the chat. Okay. Um, I see one. Oh, yes, yes, for sure. So the issue here is because the inspect button is available in our design workspace and not our simulation workspace because right now we're we're in our FEA workspace sorry our FEA workspace which is in the simulation workspace we really don't have a measure button or at least none that I know of oh wait actually I do have one here the inspect sorry so let me let me actually take a look is that what you're talking about um Soren yeah it's not accessible yeah I understand um so I guess and there's two ways to do it. Clone a study and before you add your mesh or I, I guess that, yeah, okay. So that worked. Sorry, I'm, I'm figuring this out along with you. Um, I, mean, I guess that works. You just have to hide your mesh and your inspect button, your inspect button should be accessible to you again. Um, did that work, sorry? Um, but yeah, cool, give me a sec. Okay. Um, all right. Can you guys give me a thumbs up or any reaction so that I know you guys are done setting this up and you know maybe you guys are waiting for it to solve so I can move on? Cool. Thank you, Lizzie. Thank you. Cool. Oh, I saw that work. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. Let's move on now. Cool. So now let's get into advanced settings. So uh, I'm just going to show you guys real quick back here where advanced setting is. If you go back to settings and mesh, you'll see this tree down here, this arrow that, that opens up a, a, another tree, advanced setting. And this basically gives you a lot more ways to sort of mess with your mesh settings. So I'm just going to go back to show you guys what each of them mean, or each of them does. The so first is element order. You guys will see you have a choice between parabolic or linear. So back here, mesh, 
and you go here, you have the choice of parabolic or linear. Now, the difference between the two is basically if you pick parabolic, um, fusion will be able to create what are called mid-sized nodes. And those are basically smaller elements to deal with um, curves because as you can see, each element we have here, like a triangle, the big question is now what if we have like um like a curve, right? Like what if we have a, a sphere or something like that? So if we pick parabolic, fusion will be able to better adapt the mesh to the part itself. And that's the biggest difference. Sorry, I just want to make sure the chat is clear. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. Um, next one is maximum turn angle on curves. And that basically is, sets the maximum angle uh, for arcs. So um, I think this will only greatly affect the um, when you have edges and um, curves because the smaller your settings are uh, here, the smaller your settings are basically tells fusion um, like you want more elements to be created. Like, like give an example here. Like the angle between here and here, if you make it smaller, basically now fusion will only allow like a like a smaller distance, so like more elements will have to be generated for it to sort of comply with the maximum angle that you set, and we're gonna explore that later, uh, so don't worry about that. Uh, next one is the max adjacent adjacent size ratio, and I mean it's pretty self-explanatory. So an example would be here, the difference between this element and this element, the size between these two elements, right? So that's the max adjacent um, mesh size ratio. And another one would be the minimum element size. Now the minimum element size, as I mentioned before, um, mesh is usually finer in smaller areas. Uh, so the minimum element size lets us actually specify the lower limit of the mesh size refinement. And I did skip over max aspect ratio. Um, max aspect ratio is a bit more complicated, but it's basically um, the ratio of measure between the smallest element and the largest element uh, on your uh, 3D model. We're not really gonna deal with a max aspect ratio today. Um, that's sort of one we're going to be sort of skipping out on, but that's what it means. It's basically the the ratio of the measure between the largest and the smallest element in your model. Cool. And yeah, we're back to tasks. Before I move on, uh, is is that clear, or do you guys have any questions? Anything I I, I should clarify on if I went over some of them quickly. Uh, if not, you guys can leave them. Sorry, I, I can't see the chat right now. I'll come back here. Don't think there's anything in it. Cool, cool, cool. Yes, oh, sorry about that, thank you. Um, I will be sharing these slides um, on Slack. Sorry, I forgot to do that last week. I'm gonna, attach, I'm gonna attach both of them this week on Slack. I will be sending it out on Slack. Yes, sorry. Um, but it looks like there's no other questions. I will move on. Um, sorry guys, here comes your next assignments. Um, there's a bunch. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So when I save a variation in the mesh, I want you guys to copy your first, sorry here. I want you guys to copy this 10% one, right? I want your mesh to be your average element size to be at 10%, okay? Keep it at, the, at 10, but then just mess around with whatever advanced settings um, they ask you, uh, I'm asking you to change, right? So for this one, for example, I want you to change the max turn angle on curves to 35. So just change this one to about 35, but don't change anything else. Just keep the other ones as is, okay? Um, same thing, when I ask you guys to change the minimum element size to 10%, um, your max turn angle should be 60, 
and just change your minimum element size to 10. That's it. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, but yeah, if, if, if you guys have no questions, I'll, I'll give you guys another like two minutes maybe to, to make the studies, um, duplicate your studies and sort of change your mesh settings um, as required. And then uh, if you guys wanna solve them, like simultaneously, uh, you guys can. Um, but yeah, we have a lot more to go through today, so. Really sorry about this. Uh, I, I will say this week's gonna be the, the hardest. Okay. I just got it. So we're the analysis showing screenshots for strips. Yes, yes. So so right now for everything I'm showing you guys, um three screenshots for sorry, what what does it keep coming back here? Cool. Yeah, so three screenshots for each. Okay, I'm just gonna close the chat here. Sorry, I had my chat open on my laptop and it kept switching to another tab. So an example would be um, when I ask you guys to change the maximum turn angle to 35, I want you guys to take three screenshots, right? Um, like last week, uh, one screenshot for displacement, one screenshot for safety factor, and one screenshot for stress. So in total for this one, at least is four times three, so that's 12, and I believe earlier it was also very like four variations, so that's another 12 or like 15. Uh, but yeah, did that answer your question, Holly? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Let's give, uh, I'm gonna give you guys like another minute. Um, Okay, I think that that should be good. Um, if you guys are falling behind, really don't worry about it because, um, yeah, I mean, the recording's going to be there and uh, it does take a while because I'm compiling two weeks worth of classes into one so we could fit um, more um, FEA material into the course based on the comments I got uh, last spring as well as fall. So we're going to move on. Uh, the next one is personally my favorite because it, it, it's really cool. It's called adaptive mesh refinement. So it's basically an automated tool in Fusion to apply local mesh refinement. What that means is basically um, Fusion will make the mesh for you. And um, how it does that is it analyzes what are called critical stress regions. These are areas with higher gradients or I don't know what the best way to show you guys is. Okay, I'm gonna try to do something here. Hopefully, okay, cool, cool, cool. It works. Okay, so what it means by areas with higher gradients, it basically just means this, this area over here, basically the area with where like there's a lot of color. These are um, areas with higher gradients, right? So uh, adaptive mesh re refinement basically sort of centers in on those areas and changes the mesh around those areas while still keeping the mesh around here where there's not really, where there's not really much going on, just keep it the same, right? And it divides the, the elements within the stress regions to smaller elements while again, keeping the elements in the lower gradient areas um, a bit rougher, a bit more coarse, because uh, really, like we know, nothing much is going to happen. Um, but yeah, so within adaptive mesh refinement, there are a couple of parameters that we have to vary. This one being maximum number of mesh refinements. So it's pretty self-explanatory. So um, adaptive mesh refinement basically fusion starts with a very rough mesh setting. It runs it once, and then it runs it again and again and again. So this parameter, maximum number of mesh refinements, basically allows you to dictate how many um, times you want Fusion to run it, right? So let's say you don't have time for Fusion to run 15 refinements, right? 
So you could put like two or three. So once Fusion runs it thrice, Fusion will stop immediately. Next one is results convergence tolerance. Now this basically is um, Fusion comparing the results it got from the previous iteration to the current iteration, right? So if you put your results convergence tolerance um, to about like 20%, then maybe you might not even need like, like say for the maximum number of mesh refinements, you put five refinements, right? Five times. So Fusion can run the simulation five times. But on the third time Fusion iterates, it has a convergence, a results convergence of about 5% when you only when you put the results convergence tolerance into 20%. So I'm gonna show you guys what I mean because I feel like it's not intuitive at all. Um, so for adaptive mesh refinement, how you would access it is not down here. You really can't go to adaptive mesh refinement from here. It just brings you to mesh. You would have to go to settings up here and go down to adaptive mesh refinement. I'm gonna say that again. You can't just right click on mesh and go to mesh settings. You have to go to settings up here and then there will be an adaptive mesh refinement tab here. So this is what I'm talking about. Um, so let's say I put it the medium. I have four maximum number of mesh refinements and the results convergence tolerance is 10%. But say after my second um, iteration, my result convergence is already at 5%. Fusion will stop um, right away because then it'll know like, like there's no point in me going, um, doing the third and fourth refinement as I'm already within this 10%, right? And then of course we have the third one, which is portion of elements to refine. This basically tells Fusion how much of that critical stress we want to change, right? So we put say, this is impossible, but just for like, just so you guys can imagine it, if we put 100%, then Fusion's still gonna take in that blue part, this really rough, sorry, this really rough coarse part where nothing's happening. Uh, I need to go back to results here. Yeah, Fusion's still gonna change the mesh here. If we put our, um, our portion of elements to refine to 100%, whereas if we only put it to 10%, Maybe Fusion's gonna change everything closer to this red area here. Um, and of course, the last one we have, it, oh my gosh, sorry. The last one we have is results for baseline accuracy. And this one basically is, uh, I, I wanna show you guys um, here. here. Sorry. Cool. Okay, that works. Yeah. So it's basically just I'm gonna go with the custom real quick. So you can pick what you want. So again, this is basically what Fusion will compare for these two. For this, sorry, for this. So if we click Von Mrs. Stress, then when it reaches a five percent tolerance in Von Mrs. Stress, then Fusion will stop refining. Um, I think I went through that pretty quick. Um. Can you guys give me like a thumbs up if you guys understood what I was talking about? If not, I'll I'll go back and try to do it a bit slower. Okay, thank you, Holly. Uh, if you guys would, if you guys want me to go a bit slower, I don't know what other reactions are there, but if you guys can give me a negative one, then I'll know. Um, like we should go back and review. Um, but cool. I, I'm not really seeing any negative ones, so I'm just gonna keep going. Now let's let's continue now. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 Keep going. Yeah. So this is what it looks like. Um, you guys can see here. This is what uh, the the mesh will look like when we start adaptive mesh refinement. And with every run, Fusion's gonna keep getting more and more finer. Like at like. Uh, closer to the critical point here, the mesh is going to get finer and finer. But if you guys can see, the mesh further away is going to stay relative, relatively big, right? So we could um, change the settings in a way that only maybe this area over here, like only this area has smaller, like uh, get finer mesh than like the outside parts here. 
there is a way where we could change the settings for Fusion to do that. But in a general sense, this is what adaptive mesh refinement does. Okay. Yeah, and there are four uh, predefined options for you guys to choose. None, I'm gonna be real with you guys, is really like, um, if you guys can see here, maximum number of mesh refinements is zero. So Fusion just runs it once and that's it. There's no mesh refinement basically. Um, then we have flow, which has these. Um, and then medium and then high. I mean, you guys can see it yourself in the, uh, when you guys pick the adaptive mesh refinement by sliding the slider over and then, okay. All right. Oh, um, assignment time again. Yay. Um, sorry guys, a bunch of them today. Um, yeah. So I'd like you guys to, to go back. So I'm going to swipe back here. You go back to your original model here and just change from mesh to adaptive mesh refinement and go back to 10. I mean, sorry, not go back to 10. Go to adaptive mesh refinement and start with none. Click OK and just generate your mesh. Now, a key point I want to show you guys is, sorry, I'm just going to put this as A key point I want to show you guys um, is how if I have none and high, sorry, I should get, sorry, yes. Cool. I should get the same mesh here just because. Yeah, so it starts out with the exact same mesh. If you guys saw earlier here in this none, sorry, I'm gonna put this as high so it's clearer here. Cool. So you guys can see my adaptive mesh refinement is at high here, but here in none, my adaptive mesh refinement is at none, but the mesh is exactly the same, right? So with high, we go back here. What happens is it starts with that very rough mesh and Fusion keeps iterating, right? It keeps refining up to six times or until it converges to 5% of the previous iteration. So I'm gonna run both of them and uh, it'll take a while to solve, but um, I have a couple things to go through after this. So it doesn't really um, matter. We don't really have to wait and I'm gonna, give you guys about two and a half to three minutes to work on this. Um, again, please just clone, change the slider, clone, change the slider, clone, change the slider, and don't forget to rename, and then solve all of them at once. It'll be a lot quicker. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna keep it here so you guys can see, sorry. Yep, and then for the fourth one here, you guys move the, your slider now to the rightmost setting. You guys will see custom where you guys can change the four settings yourself. So I'm gonna bring you guys there actually. If you slide it to the rightmost one, you guys can actually change it to whatever you want. And I really suggest keeping your results for baseline accuracy as bond misses stress, but um, yeah, just play with the numbers. Give me any number you'd like. Um, but I would like you guys to, uh, what do you call that? If possible, take a screenshot of this as well so I can see what your settings are. Okay. So I, I think I'll change this. Just give me a sec. It's going to be 16, right? Sorry, that's an extra one. Um, but I just like to see what settings you guys ended up with. I, but yeah, I'll give you guys two to three minutes to, to do this. And if you guys do have any questions, um, feel free to chat me or whatever is comfortable for you guys. I will continue at about 6, 17 p.m.
Sorry. And if you guys are done um, setting it up, can you guys give me a thumbs up just so we don't go overboard if it turns out we don't need two minutes to set it up? Cool, thank you. Okay, let's wait for like two more thumbs up and then we'll continue. That's one. Get one more thumbs up. Okay, I mean, okay, it's 617. Hopefully the rest of you were able to maybe like, hopefully you guys are almost done setting those up. I'm gonna continue. Um, all right, we're done with the first module. I think I, I went through that pretty quick. I'm not gonna lie. So I'm gonna try pacing myself a bit more um, for this part. I think this one's a bit harder to understand. So I think it's important if I talk a bit slower. Um, next part is shape optimization. And the main um, reason we do shape optimization is to answer the question, how do we improve our model? How do we make our model more efficient? How do we drop the safety factor of our 3D model um, in a way where we're saving material as well as money? Why do we do shape, shape optimization? Yeah, I said the first one is to reduce material um, because again, uh, we, First, CAD our product, then we do FEA, and maybe we do like we manufacture like um like a few to do in person testing. So as much as possible, um, we'd like to uh, reduce our material again. Um, besides safety factor, um, you know if we have more material, it'll be more expensive to produce, and it also reduces manufacturing time if we have less material. And if we do, uh, I mean, you guys will understand why, um, but when we shape optimize, basically our part gets smaller. There's no way we shape optimize to make our part bigger, right? So that way it should help um, improve the manufacturing time. And yeah, I mean, like if you guys should get one thing from this slide, it's that shape optimization helps a lot in the manufacturing um, stage. And how does shape optimization work? Cool. Yeah. So first, of course, you would run a static stress study on your part. And then, yeah. So again, I mean, these are very basic stuff. Uh, this is something we learned last week. This is something we just went through this week. Um, so after simulating it, a mesh will be generated. Fusion will generate the mesh for us. Um, that basically tells, uh, so we put, so sorry, sorry. When we set up a shape optimization study, we can tell Fusion, say like, I want you, Fusion, to decrease the mass of our, of the product of, of our model by 60%. So Fusion will sort of, sort of run the static stress analysis on the model like it did last week and like we've been doing now. And Fusion will give us like, um, a mesh that only keeps about 40, 50% of the mesh, mesh of our CAD model and everything else that's not in the mesh, we can actually just delete. And what I mean by delete is of course, um, we can cut, uh, we can get rid of basically, right? Um, but yeah, and there are a couple ways we can 
play around with the mesh and I'll show you guys in a bit. So steps, I'm gonna go through this step-by-step step with you guys. You'd like to create a new study here. And one thing I do recommend you guys doing is to create, um, actually let, let's do that later. So let's close all of this right now. Boom, okay. So create a new study, that's the first step. And shoot, sorry, my bad guys. Don't click static stress. When you click study here, click this one over here, shape optimization. It's the one on the bottom. And click create study. Now, if anything, you guys should notice that our interface is, okay. Okay, sorry. Um, someone sent me a private chat there. Um, okay, I'm gonna answer that in a bit. Um, sorry, uh, we're gonna have a task coming right up. So don't worry, I'm gonna answer that in a bit, but I'm just gonna go through this real quick. You guys see the interface? Let's compare these two over here. And again, this is a static stress study. And this below here is a shape optimization study. You can see that our interface is a bit different. Same way on top. If you guys can see, we have a new sort of tab here that's just called shape optimization. Something important now is when we're dealing with an assembly, we have to be clear what our target body is. I mean, right now, since we're only dealing with a singular part, it doesn't really matter. And of course, again, we'd like to um, change the material. Sorry, sorry, we're not there yet. Sorry, I'm gonna continue. Okay, and now we'd like to assign the material to aluminum 6061 and apply the same constraints and load we've been applying. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So first, change the material to 6061 there. And how you guys know if you change your material is now your part should be a bit more white. Earlier it was kind of like gray, it should be a lot more white now if you change it to aluminum. So you guys can actually just move along this line. So after you guys have done your materials, Fire constraints, fix the big hole, and then add a load here that points outwards, 10,000 newtons. Okay. Up to this point, uh, can you guys give me a thumbs up if that's so clear? Cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Let's keep moving. Next. We adjust the mesh and I mean, you guys should be familiar with this now. I'm gonna leave it to you guys um, to adjust the mesh. Actually, I actually need to, I, I need to do that too. So I guess, guess not. Um, okay, I'm gonna adjust my mesh now. Um, yeah, sorry. Right, sorry, I just got a message here. Okay, uh, so, so Lizzie, uh, ideally, I'd like you to have the aluminum material, but I did forget to do it as well. Forgot to, to let you guys know. So on me, if you guys are solving it already, it should be fine. Um, but if you guys have not solved these studies yet, please do change it to aluminum. And okay, I'm just gonna generate my mesh now. Cool. And now, is the new part where we have to define our shape optimization settings. Shape optimization settings will be down here, so you guys can see. Just click edit here. So target mass, this is what I was talking to you guys about. This is what I was saying. Um, so by setting your target mass to 30%, what this tells Fusion is basically, hey, run a study, a, a basic static stress study like we've been doing, where there's a 10,000 Newton load pushing this way. And since we know our safety factor is gonna be 15, we're basically telling Fusion, hey, 
can you decrease the mass down to 30% of its original mass while still ensuring that the part doesn't fail? So making sure that the safety factor is above one. So that's what Fusion will do here, right? So there's two things um, you guys want to make sure of. First, your target mass is below or equal to 30, as it is here. And the second one, your stiffness should be maximized. And a third thing you could do is add minimum um, member size here by hitting the plus on global constraints. It should be here. It's, it's, it's really optional. If you guys don't want to put it, then you guys aren't forced to. Um, but I might as well, it's, 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 it's there and it's a pre, uh, you guys would have to change it. Yeah, actually. Yeah. It's there. Just change that. If you guys, um, don't want to change it, then don't have to, I'm not going to change it. Um, I'm going to do that and look at our pre-check now it's green. We're ready to go. We can solve, right? So we solve that. So for, um, for shape optimization, you are going to want to solve it as is. We're not going to do like multiple one because we're going to base our future studies based on this one. So I'm going to solve. If you guys can see here, just really quick, we have cloud credits. This is why last week I asked you guys to change your accounts to education. Um, for those of you guys watching the recordings, I did go through it in lecture one. If you can't find it, do text me on Slack and I can um, sort of help you guys get around with that. Um, see if anyone in the chat has any problems. Like if you guys have not changed it to education yet, uh, if you guys are having problems with uh, how many cloud credits you have and you guys are in the meeting right now, please do send me a text and I can go over that, go through that real quick. But if not, then yeah, what do you wanna do is just solve this study. All right, I see. Yes, Ben, yes, you do have to generate each study's um, mesh before solving them. Um, it's just one of the critical components of doing an FEA study. Uh, it's like signing a material is one, but Fusion sort of just defaults it to steel. Um, and then, of course, you need your constraints and loads. But yes, you would also need to generate your uh, mesh for each study. Now, while we're waiting for our results to come up, I'm going to show you guys the difference in adaptive mesh refinement. Like I said, I was going to earlier. So our results are done. Um, I'm actually going to close uh, my results and just open my, actually, no, let me go back to results. Sorry. I'm going to go here and I'm going to, so this is my mesh for none, right? It's a very coarse. It's exactly the same like it was earlier. Now I'm going to go to high. Now you guys can see the mesh is very small here. We have a lot more elements and the critical areas where if we look at our results and go to displacement here. Oh, sorry, we used, we used stress earlier. Um, if you guys remembered, um, there's an option in the adaptive mesh refinement here for results for baseline accuracy. And that's why our mesh here is a lot more fine in these areas here, right? Why is that? It's because we set our baseline accuracy to be stress. And well, that's the points where um, the critical regions are, right? That's why the mesh is a lot finer there. But that's basically what I mean. We go out here, we see the mesh is still very coarse, very big mesh over here. Um, because really there's not much going on. This is a low gradient and this is a high gradient, right? So Fusion really just changes the mesh up for the high gradient portions and just keeps the low gradient mesh as is. So if we compare the mesh here, the here, you guys can see the difference. Although it started out the same, you can see it changed. Right, so that's basically the purpose of adaptive um, mesh refinement. Cool. I'm gonna go back to shape optimization. Um, it does take a while, so I'm just gonna switch over to 
a study that I did before class, which is this over here. So when you guys are done with your adaptive mesh refinements, this is what you should get as your result. Now, don't worry about the warning. I, I, I messed up a bit um, where I changed the, the mesh of the part itself. And that's why it's giving me a warning. But this is what you should get after you're done, um, after your um, study is done, right? You should have something that looks like this. Where you could, sorry, there's, okay, come back. Where you could play around with here, this over here. If you look down here, look at the mass ratio over here. Earlier, we said it the smaller, smaller than or equal to 30, right? That's why Fusion gave me a um, default of around here. If you look at the top, this is Fusion telling us, hey, here's what you should keep if you want to take away 70% of the object of your model's mass and still have it at around like a safety factor of one, right? So again, here's what we have in the beginning. We're going to cut away 70% of the mass. This is what we're going to be left with. Okay. Um, quick raise of hands. May I know if anyone has gotten their shape optimization to, to be done yet? Are you guys done or is it still running? If you guys, if it if it's still running, you guys don't have to react. It's gonna give you guys like five seconds. Oh wow, okay. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. Okay, gotcha. Um we will wait about uh one more minute for the rest the uh, um finish it. And while we're waiting, I'm actually going to stop screen sharing for just a moment because I'm going to send this, um, the slides out on Slack. Give me a moment here, guys. By the way, if you guys are um, done with the shape optimization, can you guys give me a thumbs up? Cool.
Okay, cool. That should be sent on Slack. Now I'm gonna um, start sharing my screen again. Um, hopefully now it's, oops. Hopefully now it's done. Cool, back here. Oh, oh it is done. Cool, yeah, so um, let me know if you guys see this as well. Cool, cool, all right, yeah. So what's next here is, I mean, yeah, like I did earlier, you guys can play around with the slider here um, to see like how much you would have to cut in order to get say like 43% of your um, original mass or 15% of your original mass, right? Um, but yeah, um, so how exactly now do we change our original design to look like our shape optimized part, right? So to do that now, here in our results tool, by the way, if you guys click out, you can simply come back by just clicking the results. So when you're here, you'll have the option to promote. Now, before anything, please do not, um, just follow along with me. Don't click anything else yet because you might be, you might like um, mess up all your previous studies here. So you'd like to promote. Now, when you promote, you will have three options, design workspace, existing simulation model, or clone current simulation model. Now, I'm gonna just put it here. So here are the three options and what each of them does, right? So when you say existing simulation model, it just modifies the original body of um, this, this model, this simulation model, right? So that when you click finish results now, if, sorry, don't do that, don't do that, sorry. Um, but basically if you do that, um, you will have this mesh applied to your design. And the issue there is now, if you guys can see, we get warnings now for all our other studies. And why is that? Let's try clicking on this, right? That's because now our mesh is out of date. And if I click generate mesh now, you would have to do it again. That's 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 basically it. Um, if you guys did that like accidentally, um, just send me a screenshot. I'll still accept it. Um, but I would ideally like you guys to instead promote to a current own current study. And why is that? Here, let me show you the other two um, options you guys have. Now the first one, the second one is to to to, to design workspace, right? So you guys would promote to design workspace. And I'm just gonna do it because I'm not gonna submit anything. I highly suggest you guys don't do this because it's gonna give you a warning for all your studies, right? So if I add mesh object to design workspace, here's what it'll look like. If you guys can see, I'm out of the simulation workspace. I'm back in a design workspace, but my mesh is now imported here. It's here, right? Um, of course, I can just delete my mesh here. But if I go back to simulation, now again, even my shape optimization will have a warning telling me it's out of date, right? So the third one is clone current simulation model. And what it does is it basically creates a new simulation model, not a new study, a new simulation model, right? And you should be safe now don't clone studies here. If you clone studies, it's going to clone each one of this, each one you did before the shape optimization. So just add mesh to clone current simulation model and click OK. You guys should have that, right? You guys should be brought immediately to simplify. Up to this point, can I get a thumbs up if you guys are following along well? And again, if you guys made a mistake, it's fine. Um, Still send me those screen, screenshots. You don't have to, you know, um, regenerate every mesh and wait for the results. If you, um, you, um, if you've solved some of the studies and they now have a warning saying it's out of date, that's fine. Really, just send me a screenshot um, in the Q 
PDF submission, it should be fine. Um, but okay, let's keep going. So once you're here, you can modify your 3D model by, okay, sorry, sorry. We'll do this later. Um, so the first thing we need to do is modify the original 3D model, right? And what does that mean? Um, that basically means, I'm just gonna go top here. I want you guys to cut out everything that's not in the mesh, right? Seems a bit confusing. Let me walk you guys through how to do that. You're in a simplify um, module now. You guys can see there's a bunch of things we could do that eerily resembles the design workspace, right? I mean, we've been through the simplify um, workspace before. I want you guys to create a sketch on this plane, on the top plane. And basically, just sketch out. Just sketch out the, the mesh. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate. I don't mind. Um, but I'm just going to show you guys what, I, what I'm doing. Uh, follow along, you know, create like just cut the mesh. I mean, cut your model based on the mesh here. Making it really rough. Um, but if you guys can make it a bit more accurate, that would be helpful. I'm not asking for a super accurate one. I don't want you guys to zoom in really far into it and make sure it's like to the point accurate. Just enough. Sorry. Cool, that worked. Yeah, that worked. Cool, cool, cool. Um, last one. Kind of here. Mark. Boom. And this is why uh, we'd ideally like you guys to have a bit of CAD experience before taking FEA. Uh, this is one of the biggest modules that require CAD experience. Um, once you're done with a sketch like this, again, doesn't have to be perfect. Finish sketch and extrude them down. If you guys see what it does is it basically cuts material and gives us a little bit more. Oh, something happened here, sorry. There you go us a small sorry okay there you go it gives us a smaller more quote-unquote efficient model because now we got rid of all of the unnecessary mass all the unnecessary parts like here in the center and here in the big hole where it's really not going to feel anything so up to this point can you guys give me a thumbs up if you guys are following along well cool thank you nicholas Thank you, Stone. Thank you. Okay. And again, if you guys have any questions, just drop something in the chat. Um, I'll respond to it as quick as possible. But as of right now, I'm going to move on. If you guys are still making your sketches, it's fine. Then I'm just going to move on for now. So after you're done with that, you want to finish your Simplify. Now it's going to ask you for a new study, right? So this is when we go back here. And now this is when we do a static stress analysis, right? Keep the same conditions again. Keep your aluminum at 60, 61. Sorry. Okay. Um, again, keep your material at 60, aluminum 60, 61, and same constraint, same load of 10,000 newtons, and same mesh configuration, right? So, what I mean by that, we go down here. So, here we're going to constrain it. Boom, boom, outwards, 10,000. And we're gonna manage our mesh. I believe it was 1% here and 1% here. Um, yeah. Cool. Generate our mesh. Please don't freeze. Yeah, that's probably going to take a while. All right, let's go back to the slides first. But that's what I want you guys to do. Then, cool, sorry. Cool. So, yeah, I'm going to give you guys about 
two minutes to work on that. And by the way, I, I did send the slides um, out on Slack. So if I'm swiping around Fusion and the uh, PowerPoint and you guys really just want to stay in the PowerPoint now, uh, you guys can just open the PowerPoint itself, um, download it from Fusion, uh, from Slack, sorry. What did you... Okay. Um, sorry, Ben. Let, um, I'll I'll get to it right after um it finish meshing finishes the mesh. Uh, but basically, after you're done with your shape optimization and after you promote your um shape optimized mesh now to a new simulation model, you would be brought directly to the simplify um into the simplify workspace and there um. After you extrude it and you click done, it should just automatically, like the material should be removed and it should immediately get like redirect you to the new study interface. And I'm going to show you in just a bit after this finish meshing, after this finishes meshing. Um, but are you, are you still having a problem with that, Ben? I'm sorry, it's, it's taking really long. Oh, that's not good. What's this here, meshing error? Okay, it looks like I made this a little bit too thin. Yeah, okay, there you go. There's a hole here. Is there a hole? Okay. Okay. Well, let me just go back here. I'm going to go back to my simplify here. And yeah, so Ben, to answer your question, you should be brought to an interface like uh, an interface like this after you import your, um, sorry, it's called promote. After you promote your mesh, um, initially it should look like this. And then after you extrude it, it should just automatically extrude. And once you finish simplify, it should you, it should bring you back to a to this interface over here. Uh, can you let me know, Ben, if that's not what you're getting? Um, yeah, but at the moment, I'm just gonna fix my simplify here. Mesh is not up to date. Okay, there we go. Cool. So now that you have that and you solved it, this should be what you get. Um, you get. See the difference here? Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Uh, oh, okay. I'm, I'm just going to go back here because this is where I have, um, a study finished already here. But here's what I want you guys to do now is to change, uh, the mass ratio. Sorry. Uh, from 30, 40, and then from 40 to 20. So in total, I want you guys to do shape optimization three times. And if you guys followed along for 30, it should mean that you guys have two more to go. And a big, big note now that I probably would have forgotten if I was a student um, is when you promote, when you promote, Clone current simulation model. Do not click either one of these two. 
because it's going to give you a warning for the rest of your studies. Okay. Um, if you guys are are good with it and ready to work on the assignment, can you guys give me a thumbs up? Um, if not, uh, could you drop down in the chat what you guys are having an issue with? And while everyone else is working, we can go through that. Uh, so I, I guess I want to ask Ben right now. Um, were you able to figure out um, how to extrude the new sketch pen? Cool. All right. Sounds good. Um, then, yeah, uh, I know, guys, it's a lot of work. Uh, I'm really sorry. I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to figure out a better way to do this. But in the previous semesters, this is how sort of the submissions have been working. It's just the students submitting screenshots. Um, and that's how we grade you guys. So, yeah, I'll give you guys about, we have a bunch of time, so maybe 10 minutes. Um, I'll give you guys 10 minutes to work on this. At the moment, I'm going to stop my video and mute myself for about five. I'm going to take a quick bathroom break, but I'll be back.
Oh, by the way, if you guys have any questions, please do just let me know down in the chat. Just drop them in the chat if you guys are having any issues with this. And I do want to give you some good news. Um, this is the last task. So after this, we'll probably have like about 30 minutes left. Um, I'm going to take about five minutes to explain. It's your, your homework. I, I really don't like giving you guys homework, but um, I'd like you guys to do a project because we've been de dealing with this part for the past two weeks now. And I'd like you guys to do an FEA study on a part that's not this. Um, but more on that in about like three minutes. Um, so yeah, take your time if you're still um, setting up the studies. If you're done, go get some water, take a quick bathroom break. We'll probably resume at 7.03. Okay. Okay, I see a question there. What mesh setting do we use? Uh, for this one, I'm just going to go back here. Right here, I think it's in here. Um, yeah, so uh, please change your mesh setting to, to this one over here. So model base size 1% and then maximum turn angle on curves 10 degrees. I'm going to switch to the um, fusion interface, so um, it's a bit more clear. This analysis, yeah. Okay. So your mesh now, you want it to be one percent model base size, and then go to advanced settings here and change your maximum turn angle on curves to ten degrees. Yeah, but thanks for asking. Ben. All right, so when we give up the issue, we need to post recap. But have three. Oh my gosh. Um, oopsie, sorry. Um, yes, so it should be nine. I don't know where my mouse is, sorry. Um, where is my mouse? Uh, yes, it should be nine. So I'm sorry, not twelve. Can't see my mouse. Okay, there it is. Sorry, there you go. Okay, we have one more minute and then we're gonna move on. Gonna be really quick. Um, I'll, I'll spend like five minutes again talking about the project and then maybe another five to 10 minutes if you guys have any questions. Uh, but if you guys uh, would like to stay longer than that, I will still be here up until 7.30. Um, but yeah, um, just, uh, I just wanna, I'm just curious, can you guys give me a thumbs up if you were able to finish um, setting up all of them? No way, okay, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. I wasn't able to finish it in class um, and I had this separated into like two weeks, so respect. Okay, 
we are going to move on. So just really quick, I want you guys to do a project and submit it along with this week's assignments. And what I want you guys to do is create a shape or it doesn't really have to be a shape. If you guys wanna create a full on part, you guys can do that. Um, I know last spring, someone made a hammer um, and a lot more complicated stuff, um, but I can't think of them on the top of my head. I'll probably include some of them in our Slack channel, uh, but I just want to let you guys know that this is like super simple. Like if you guys create like a, a rectangle, extrude it, and just give me like a block, like that's fine. Just run shape optimization on it, you know, like make something fixed, um, apply a force and then do shape optimization and run a static uh, stress simulation on it. That's all I'm asking you guys to do. So again, what I want you guys to submit is the three screenshots, safety factor, displacement and stress. And then two additional ones. First is the mesh of your shape optimization. So just want to show you guys what that looks like. Damn, that's not what I that's not what I wanted. Let's go to this here. Okay. Um oh, I guess I guess we could see it here. The first mesh I want you guys to show me is this mesh over here. So that's your fourth screenshot. And what I want your fifth screenshot to be is damn. Sorry, don't do what I did because again, you'll just get, uh, you'll get a, a warning now. Um, but what I want your fifth screenshot to be is basically screenshot after you simplified your, come on, after you simplified your model, I want you guys to give me another screenshot. Basically, like something like this, I guess. And I would have to renew it. I guess I can generate the mesh. But here you go. So that's your fifth screenshot. So again, the first three, displacement, safety factor, stress. The fourth one, I want you guys to send me this. And then the fifth one, send me this mesh. Um, does that make sense? Can you guys give me a thumbs up if that makes sense? Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Um, but yeah, that will be all. Again, I just want to remind you guys, you can like explore, you know, go, go, go deep, you know, like make as complex as a part or as complex as a shape as you guys want. But um, if you guys don't have the time um, to do that, creating a cube, creating like um, the simplest shape would work as well. Like I'm not really asking for too much uh but yeah i mean besides that i doubt anyone could do this but if you guys are done um here is the submission link again i will post this on slack um along with the attendance form um and the youtube recording once it's done uploading to youtube so it'll probably be somewhere around 9 p.m tonight but yeah be on the lookout for that um but besides that we are done. Do you guys have any questions for me? Uh, if not, you guys can go. That's basically it for this week. I'm going to stop the recording now.